Hey everybody, welcome back to Nya. Here I am. Again. So as many of you know, I am no elitist when it comes to conlanging. Of course, I've gradually been developing what would become Origin for like 13 years, but it was pretty much trash until like a little bit before I started this channel. I, I had my first experience with the conlang community in late 2018, and quite quickly I was overwhelmed because there were so many things I didn't know, so many vocabulary words. And every time I make a post on the Conlang subreddit asking about some specific topic about an aspect of Conlang, I'd be blasted by people spamming me with phrases and made up words and it made me feel like I should have already known about those words somehow. Whether it was on purpose or just a side effect of how nerdy we all are, it, it took me a solid six months to overcome this apparent gatekeeping and have the confidence to even make this channel. <laughs> so today I'm going to be giving my best attempts at defining as many conlang related vocabulary words as I can think of. A lot of these words were suggested by the members of the Agma Schwa Discord server, links in the description. Many of you are already going to know all of these words, and a lot of you are probably going to even have differing opinions on the definitions that I'm about to give, which is fine, you know, just go go in the comments and, and roast me for whatever you think I was wrong about, and because that'll help still make this entire video a more educational thing. The point is I'm trying to make language construction more accessible to people who want to do it but get overwhelmed by all the components involved in thinking about their languages, creating their languages, sharing their languages with others, etc. For every person who's been deep in the Conlang community for a decade now, there's 10 people who want to be in the Conlang community but get lost in all the noise and complex applications. I get emails a lot about people asking me for help with things, asking me like what, what certain concepts mean, like how to define certain things, and you know, not only are there many possible right answers, but it's also all art and I don't like people being nervous about making art because I was nervous about making art and making conlang art for a long time and it really definitely held me back, so you know, I'm trying to help people avoid that. So l let's start. So I know our hero, our lord, David Peterson, explains the basic types of conlangs in his book, The Art of Language Invention. You know, as he says in the, uh, in the Jedi sacred texts, I'm gonna explain those categories that he mentions, along with as many others as me and my Discord peeps could think of, and yeah, mo most of them are gonna be various formations of blank lang. You know, most of them are gonna end with lang. That's, that's just how we do it here. So for the first conceptual layer of the languages, you have natlangs and conlangs. <laughs> Another side note, a lot of these have debated meanings, as in like there could be more than one potential definition to the abbreviated vocabulary terms. Like you're gonna see that a few times. And again, argue in the comment section about which one is, you know, the more right one um, without sounding like a prescriptive <laughs> yeah, we, we make up all these terms. The conlang community is still rapidly expanding, so there's gonna be these kinds of confusions. So yeah, there's a couple times, including this very first example, where there is a little bit of an overlap. You have natlangs and conlangs. Now, a natlang, with this, this first definition, is a natural language, one that exists in the real world, has native speakers, descends from real-life proto-language, and has been evolving for all of history. A uh, conlang, however, is a constructed language, a language that was designed by a person or a group of people artificially, you know, artistically, for whatever purpose they might so choose. Pretty much every vocabulary word after this is going to be under the category of a conlang for obvious reasons. So first thing, something that has confused many people for a long time is the difference between an a priori language and an a posteriori language. Essentially, an a priori language is a language whose grammar and vocabulary, lexicon, etc. is not based on any real life existing language, right? So if you're completely making it up from scratch, it is a priori no matter what. If it is a posteriori, it is a language whose grammar and vocabulary is based on a real life existing language. <laughs> They're fancy Latin words for a really simple concept, so just keep that in mind. All right, so now onto onto some more thick categories. So first we have an oxlang, or which 
stands for an auxiliary language, which is designed to be used as a more efficient way for a certain group of people in the real world to communicate. It is often designed with the intent to be utilized in the real world by real people to improve communications. Now, if you're extra big brain, you could even make an auxlang within your con world. You know, say like there's a big global organization in your world and they want to make their own auxiliary language to try and communicate with each other. Then technically, yeah, you can have an auxlang that's, you know, fictional and not based on anything in the real world. So then you have an engelang or, or engelang, depending on how you want to do that, which is an engineered language, which is a conlang that is designed not to be intuitive for humans, but rather it's designed to express crazy amounts of specificity and data for certain types of ideas, often which such small differences of sounds can completely change definitions so that it's just not really practical for any human to actually learn, and they overall just like look really cool and have like a really well-tuned, well-figured-out structure. Then you have a Romlang which is a romance conlang, and it is often an oxlang, which is an attempt to create a language descended from Latin. You know, like we have the romance language in the real world, a romlang is a romance conlang. These languages are often designed to look similar to, but still markedly different languages from the real life natural romance languages. Surprisingly popular thing to do, a mini lang which is a miniature language, a conlang designed to be extremely simple with a very small number of words or root words designed to be as easy to learn as possible. Many people consider Tokipona to be a mini-lang, a personal language, which is a language that a person makes with no intent of it being used by other people, whether real or fictional. It can be structured in a way that represents emotional structures of one person's mind. If you make a language that is just intended for you and your own philosophical thoughts, then that's a personal language. Technically all of them are personal languages, you know, until you start showing them to people, but th this is a specific category. Then you have an IAL, which is an International Auxiliary Language, which is an Oxlang that is created with the intent of it being used on a large international or even global scale. There have been many attempts at a global language, all of which are varyingly successful or attempts at IALs. Like Esperanto claimed to be an IAL, but it's, it's really not. Hot take, if, you know if that even is a hot take anymore. Here's one with two conflicting definitions. Artlang. Now, first definition for an artlang is an artificial language. It's a conlang that's designed not to look naturalistic, but it rather functions solely for aesthetics and regular patterns. Many artlangs border on or easily cross into the category of engelangs, though this is not a requirement. Then there's the second and more common definition for an artlang, which is an artistic language which is most langs, honestly, which is a conlang crafted for any purpose other than for being an auxiliary language. Though, you know, all conlangs are art, so, like, you know, if you're making it for a fictional world, then it's generally an artistic language as opposed to an auxiliary language. Weird. A collab lang which is a collaborative language, a conlang created by a group of people for any purpose. Next you have... Clong. In all, all its glory. <laughs> it is a language created for the sole purpose of being a meme. They can be purposefully cringy, wildly impractical, purposefully hideous, all of the above for the sake of getting laughs out of fellow conlang nerds. It is the, the epitome of what it means to be deep in the community. Most people so far are considering my rabid language a clong. Similarly, there's also a joke lang, just a joke language, a language that is created to emphasize a single punchline. It's similar to a clong, but in this case the language is only funny for like one or two aspects of itself rather than for it being entirely a mess. Then we have the speed lang. <laughs> you know, something I, you know, should have known about before. A speed run language is a conlang made as quickly as possible as a part of some kind of speed running game. I did not know that this was a word when I created my conlang speed run video. And of course, I got at least one comment on Reddit saying like, um, duh, it's called speed langing, um, don't try to claim you invented it. 
which, <laughs> you know, it, it, may, it made me die a little bit on the inside. <laughs> uh, oh god. But yeah, no, it's it's a thing, speed lang. And then you have a stealth lang, which is a language created for the purpose of being a secret means of communication between specific people. The whole point of a stealth lang is that people other than your specific friend or friend group aren't supposed to know what it means. Before the days of Autogene, the Kasanotion alphabet started out as a stealth script because my friends and I would use it in middle school to write secret notes to each other in the bathroom stalls and stuff. A Xenolang is a language that's designed to be very different from natural languages. This can mean a lot of things. It could be spoken by aliens that have non-human mouths. It could be spoken by humans, but it just includes features that do not show up in many, if any, natlangs. Natconlang, a naturalistic constructed language, which is a language that is created with the intention of seeming as much as possible that it could have come out of the real world, or a real world. Autojun is a naturalistic language. It is a natcon lang is it is meant to be spoken by you know the dog people with human mouths and no reason to not act linguistically just as humans do a con pigeon is a word that i first heard and perhaps was coined by jan meesley in his viosa video it refers to a language created as an improvised adaptation for communication between several people like a real pigeon but done in an artificially crafted situation Pretty cool. This one, slightly controversial, a standard language. Yes, a standard language is the fake dialect of a real language that is created by educational programs around the world to teach real life students the basics of a language. It's weird to think about, but technically, since the Spanish I learned in school from textbooks tried to be like a smooth combination of all the various Spanishes from around the world, it doesn't actually fit perfectly into how Spanish is spoken anywhere. This might be like a bit controversial of a claim, but every attempt to create a standardized language is basically creating an oxlang that creates rules that real people have to follow in real life. Weird to think about, but you know, big brain moment again, like it's true. It's honestly true. A sign lang which is a sign language, is a language that is created not to involve sounds coming from the mouth, but rather from visual cues. There are many sign langs, both created for fictional worlds and those that are used in the real world. And then uh, similarly, there's a dance lang, which is a language where communication is done through body movements, dancing and feet movements. I don't think there's any natural dance langs, though again, correct me if I'm wrong. Then you have a flag lang, which is a language where information is communicated through flag and semaphores, such as those that ships use in real life. A surprising amount of people have been making their own flag langs lately, I've been seeing a lot on Instagram. A log lang or lodge lang, the logical language, usually in Angelang, that is designed specifically to convey logic and mathematical concepts in the most efficient way possible. Like if you can think of the most logical way to convey information and you turn that into your own con lang, then that's a log lang. Then you have a a philosophical language, an art lang devoted just to create representations for strictly philosophical thought. This can also be a personal language, most of the time it is a personal language. Then you have a hist lang, which is a historical language. It's a language that is made for the purpose of showing diachronic change. Any proto-language that you create um, for your conlang, along with any proto-language that real linguists use in the real world, is technically a hist lang. And what what is a proto-language, you may ask? A proto-lang, or proto-language, is a language that is the ancestor to one or more other languages. These could be intended for real-world languages, in which situations they are reconstructed using real-life evidence. They could also be intended for conlangers to create entire language families within a single world, just how right now I'm making proto cernkahil just as much as, you know, proto-Indo-European is a proto-lang. Then you have a music-lang, which is a language where information is conveyed through music, like tone and rhythm. Then you have a bogo lang, which is a type of ox lang that is specifically a combination of two nat langs, just two of them. An alt lang, which is an alternative language, which is a con lang made for an alternate history scenario, in which some event happening differently in history would lead to a future language being completely
completely different. A Relex or a redone lexicon is the product of taking all the grammar and sounds of a Nat Lang and just redoing the lexicon. Like just, just switching out all of the actual words and roots but keeping the entire grammatical system and phonology the same. Then you have the most cursed descent of a Klong, which is known as a Hell Lang. Yep, with three L's in a row, is an attempt to make a Klong as cursed as physically possible. So disgusting that it is beyond comprehension. I have yet to see the perfect Hell Lang, though the KF Bop T is pretty close. Then you have a Germanic Lang. Similar to a Romlang is an Ox Lang designed to be descended from Proto-Germanic. Similar but markedly distinguishable from real life Germanic languages. You have a Slavic Lang, which is the same thing but with Slavic languages, you know, comes from Proto-Slavic, descends from there. Creole Lang, or a Creole language, is a conlang made to be a Creole of two other conlangs. Pidge Lang, a pidgin language, is like a Creole Lang, but it is designed to be a conlang pidgin language. A cipher lang. A cipher lang is a language that is, in the most meta way imaginable, a secret code for another language within its writing or even its very structure. Now that is like, that is tough to do. An emoji lang. The language that is meant to be written exclusively with emojis. For obvious reasons, an emoji lang is good at expressing emotions better than most other concepts, so there have been some pretty interesting attempts. A sketch lang, which is a language that is not fully developed, perhaps an idea that was just quickly sketched out and was never really fully fleshed out. Like someone had a cool idea and then they wrote down the basics of it and then they just stopped, but they still have possession of that, you know, very quickly written down idea. And then finally we have a kitchen sink comma. I heard this a lot and it took me a long time to figure this out because I had never heard the colloquial phrase before. A kitchen sink conlang is a conlang where the conlanger throws everything in but the kitchen sink. As in, the conlanger basically tries to put every imaginable weird outstanding feature into one language as they possibly can to the point where it's basically a clong whether intentionally or not. It's usually an insult. So those are the types of conlangs that my Discord people and I could come up with after our time in the community. I'm sure Sure, there are more or less if you're more of a lumper than a splitter. One language could have as many of these titles as is necessary to explain what it is. It would be tough, but you could have a Romlang, Englang, Philosophical Lang, Loglang, Artlang, Collab Lang, but at that point it would basically also be a Klong, Hell Lang, Kitchen Sink, Con Lang. And then before we go, there's just a couple more terms that I hear spammed all over the place and it took me a long time to figure out what they meant because I'm bad at researching things. First, I see a lot of Anadu. And a D E W, which stands for a Nat Lang did even worse, which is a phrase used when people question or criticize a feature of somebody's conlang, and that is similar to Akadu, A C A D E W, which is a conlang already did even worse, which is similar, but this one's a bit more rude. You know, they're both kind of insults, though Anadu could kind of be more in jest than an insult, but feels a bit more targeted at insulting when somebody implies that somebody already had your idea and executed it so badly that people generally don't even want to try it anymore. Yeah. And then finally, Lexember is a word that I've heard a lot, and this is generally a hashtag utilized when somebody makes it their goal to create and define at least one new word per day in their conlang for an entire month and make a post each day with this content. This can be a big group event, usually in December, or it could be an individual choosing to engage in a month of lexicon making at any time of the year. So yeah, that's a lot of terms. And of course, like, why am I surprised? We literally make things out of languages. How is our community and specifically not supposed to have a massive entire dictionary of vocabulary words related to our own community? You know, like, <laughs> it's really, it's really unavoidable. It makes complete sense that of course it's us who has like a list of a hundred different terms and everyone's going to be arguing about the definitions now because you know of course probably half the things I said are going to be considered wrong by some people and right by other people and you know it's just what, what are you going to do? Are you going to complain about it or are you going to make some good constructive 
arguments about it. So anyway, that's all I have today. Hopefully this has been informative to new conlangers, and hopefully I've only triggered a few veteran conlangers. I'm just trying to help. So again, join the Discord. Um, go in a, in follow r slash agmashwa and make posts to it, submit fan art, whatever. Stuff can go on the walls. Become a patron on my Patreon. I would like so absolutely worship you if you actually did that. Like if you consider me a guy with less than a thousand subscribers worthy of being a Patreon subscription worthy, like a few people already have. Like wow, like geez, holy heck. Again, I would worship you forever if you did it. Patreon.com slash nga for that. Go to nga.org to check out my stuff and until next time not out mwah, mwah, mwah. see ya bye jeez this is a long video all right see ya